For some reason, I didn't get in touch with myself better when I'm writing in the season of the bear trees. And maybe it's that senescent time of year where it is, you know, things have kind of died off that when it's reduced to its, its barest elements, I feel vulnerable and it allows me to get to that emotion that I want when I write. And so I always have something that I want to have um, pushed forward in, before it happens so that when I'm in the season of bear trees, I have this piece of work that I can throw myself into. Oh, now the chickadees, watch this. They're gonna get pissed at me. What are you guys doing, huh? You gonna tell everybody about me and Ben? That's what they do. <laughs> when I'm bow hunting, I'm sitting under a tree and, and I think I got the place to myself. It just takes one of them to land near me and they don't move. Pretty soon it goes away and brings back a dozen more. They get, they're all around my head, just chirp, chirp, chirp. <laughs> they go ape shit on me. And I don't know how smart other things are. Like, does every bear and every moose in the woods know that they've got me on location, you know? My goodness. To an ice fisherman, that's music to my ears. <laughs> The, the birch, they're green. But the interesting thing about birch now is when the leaves fall off, all the sugar and the fluid goes down to the roots for the winter. So if you cut a tree between now and April, um, it's way less green per se than in the summer. So birch, you can knock it down if it's a dry, windy winter by spring already, it can be some pretty good wood. And then once it's off the stump, all that sap can't go back up in there and so you basically got some nice dry wood by the next fall, so we cut down some big ones in the yard and burned them up. They were really good wood. Yeah. Maybe. Oh wow, three eighths. Yeah, it's probably three eighths of an inch there. We're heading toward winter. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> This is my season, man. And it's gonna get better when we get in that canyon, I think. Yeah. It's an interesting time, too, because the uh, animal tracks that I were maybe in the sand or the mud, they're all covered up with leaves and really hard to track anything in this kind of situation for animal tracks. So it's a nice break for them after the hunting season. <laughs> God, we have fun, Ben. Yeah, man, it's fun. You know, you're between assignments, so it's like no pressure work. It's like no, this. Is... You know, and I'm I'm just having a weekend, and um, there's I'm not out to kill anything, unless something happens. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> uh... percent. <laughs> yeah. So this this year I'm at. Uh, 66% of 100. Okay. Not <laughs> 66 years old. So two thirds are of uh, my life are past me, and I hope there's a, uh, another third there. So I am uh, starting this season of bear trees, uh, writing Act Three. <laughs> mm -hmm. The perfect last third. Perfect. Everything has to come together in a grand wrap in Act Three. <laughs> And if it doesn't, well, that's the twist. It <laughs> 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 had kind of a surprise act three. <laughs> <laughs> so this is part of those cliffs that fell off. You know, how many thousands or ten thousands of years ago did that come bouncing off that hill? And of course, the trees in the forest have all evolved past that time, but Probably about 15 years ago, I was on a hike like this, and a big chunk of the mountain had fallen off, and it didn't while I was hiking, but you could see a swat where it just took off all the timber for about 75, 80 feet wide. And you could smell the greenery like when a tornado or a hurricane defoliates everything. 
there was that smell of that pulp from the, the green trees and the leaves. So I knew it was like within a couple days of it. And it must have been in Anchorage or something because I would have thought that would have made like a shaking of the earth. It was that, that much of the mountain had fallen off. Yeah. Just. Pretty amazing um, the geology of this place and what what happened here. I'd love to have had a time lapse of this thing from 10,000 years ago. <laughs> Jeez, can you imagine these rocks falling down like thunder every every other day or whatever they did to to create this? And then all the time it took with this wind to create soils, and then these brown grasses, which are are a miracle. They they shatter their seeds. I'll show you the. This is a Calamagrostis canandensis. And this plant has, an, you talk about adaptive strategies to survive, imagine if um, you couldn't have babies, this is the seeds, they're gonna shatter and fall off in the wind. But if that doesn't work, never fear, they run rhizomally, which means they'll just take the root system, go oh, get into some sunshine, and they just take off and go toward the sun. And like if a tree drops, like if this tree were gone, you could come back in a couple of years and this grass would have run, run itself up into that open spot where the sun hits it. So it's really a, one of my favorite plants. I don't know my grass is all that well, but I really love this grass, um, especially this time of year, because it just represents to me what survival tactics, you know? You can run and you can have babies. <laughs> so little miracles every day out here. There's hardly any berries left. They've all fallen off with the frost, uh, but there's some there. And um, in the, the world of gray and brown, a little bit of green with spruce, they give the, give the world a little bit of pop this time of year. <laughs> they really stick out, especially if it's a sunny day. Your eye will just go right to the red berries. Just a little, uh, like in an artistic fashion, you gotta have a little bit of an accent color, and there it is, nature's own tapestry. Contrasty. Oh, this is good lighting. No, for, dude, it's good. It's all. It's really good. You man. know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no diffusers, <laughs> no flags. It's no. just freaking any any backdrop you want is, is lit, right? No, it's all good. Yep. It's amazing light. Yeah. What are you um? What are your ISO set on your like a? summer, the creek is just noisy enough or tight enough in here on these rocks, I always have my gun drawn for, for because with a bear they can't hear you and that's how I've run into bears is, yep. um, you're near rushing water and you're in tight quarters like this rock and all of a sudden you come around the corner and there they are 18 feet away or whatever. You surprise them and scare them, you're in trouble. Yeah, well I had one come out, not this creek, but a different one I was running and uh, it came out of the creek bed, ran in front of me and by the time I took my next step it, it really turned around and left. It was gone. <laughs> I Man. couldn't have got my gun out to save my life for that. But 90% yeah. of the bears I've seen, I've seen their ass when they're running away. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you want that to be 99.99% <laughs> cuz the one that doesn't might be the one that takes you, you know. Oh, yeah. Yep. Just what I had hoped. See that yeah, nice ice forming on it?
more snow. Well, maybe we can go along here, though. This isn't too deep. I didn't have my glasses on, so I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about focus. It'll do it. It'll do it. Yeah. Ancient glacial mud and rock compacted together for I don't know, millions of years, I suppose. I really should know more about the geology here than I do, because it's a pretty cool area. I might climb up here just a little bit to look up the creek a bit. We're getting some of that wind through here, too. <clears throat> I think this place is hauntingly beautiful all four seasons of the year, but especially now with the bare trees, it's incredible. It is renewal. It's um, the brushes are against the sky like a canvas, and um, it's an empty sheet of paper, and it's waiting for the story to be told. Some people would call spring the beginning of their year, but for me, the season of the bare trees is the thing, man. I mean, this is the time of beginning. It's it's. You can see into the woods like you can never see before. You wouldn't see this canyon in the summer for the understory. I mean, you'd see some of the detail, but nothing like we can see today. So every nook and cranny is exposed here this time of the year. I love that. Place is quiet. I'll probably come here every day now. <laughs> I've been going the other direction, but you know, it's a short hike from the house. I can be here in what, 20 minutes maybe. And um, I like to come out here and pray. I, and at that point in my life where that's a very important thing and I need to be in a place that kind of is conducive to that away from the noise and the emails and the texts and the, I think I get a signal up here with the cell phone but I'm not even sure. 